cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lindsay from Dallas, Texas, and in the studio with me today on the Millionaire Goals Podcast, episode 24 is number 66 from the Pittsburgh Super Bowl champ, Pittsburgh uh, Steelers here. Uh, I'm excited because he blocked for Roethlisberger. He blocked for Tebow. He, brock, he blocked for Luck, Breeze, Tannehill, Romo. And uh, he's also in a financial services space. We're going to talk about personal finance today, financial literacy. We're going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about the importance of fatherhood. So, yo, Tony, man. heels with an S. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it, man. I'm excited to be here. Awesome, Shout man. out to you, man. <laughs> and and it's, it's crazy, man. Episode 24. Shout yeah, out bro. to the late, great Kobe Bryant. That's Brian, right. Man. That's right. That is, that is amazing, man. You can't That's make it. that up. That's it, man. Yeah. That's it. Well, we got greatness in uh I wanted to say you are the um, you are the second NFL player we've had on this Pacific podcast. Wow! Okay. First Super Bowl champ, though. All right. First Super All Bowl right. Champ. We're doing well. <laughs> We're doing well. We're setting records up in here. All right. So I, I uh, I'm intrigued about uh, your background because you got, you got drafted in the um, in the fourth round. Yeah. 2008 draft. Yep. Uh, you went to Texas. I did. I did. Pick 130 with the 130 pick in the fourth round. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Tony Hills out of Texas. That's Absolutely. Cr- I'll never forget it. That's crazy, man. Yeah. And I think what's also very intriguing to you, because especially for the listeners of the Millionaire, Goal po- mm-hmm. Millionaire Goals podcast and his Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel, is, is that you also now in, or you're in, you transition to the personal finance space, financial literacy space. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you the thing that jump-started. You remember that uh, that it was a... Video that came out with 30 for 30 called Broke. Yes, that's right. Oh, that scared the crap out of me. Ed Butowski. Oh, yeah. Ed yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Ed. I met Ed, too. Yeah. yeah. He's a good guy. But uh, I'm, I'm so glad he put that out because that got a lot of guys talking, you know. And, and I'm sitting on that team, and I'm seeing names of people that I'm playing with that's on that list. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't fall into that. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Absolutely. Matter of fact, uh, I'm going to pull up a picture here, but uh, Ed, because we were talking, mm. but uh, Ed and I were actually on a, per, a first ever personal finance uh, reality show, which was sponsored by Emerson Money yeah. and TD Marriott back in the day. And that's how I got introduced to the 30 for 30 series that they're working on. Got yes. to meet a Pablo Torre up in New York, yeah. uh, the only Filipino on uh, yeah, ESPN. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. we're coming up, baby. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, so I, you were a tight end, though. You were formerly a tight end. Talk to yeah. us about the transition from tight end, yeah. catching you know, catching uh, balls man. to left to, to be an offensive lineman. Yeah, man, we got to go back, man. I started out in basketball, so I actually, uh, when I was 14, I left the country, and I traveled to Spain for the Junior Olympics to play basketball, and that was a great experience. When I got back, the way I got into football is that um, the coach that was at my high school had basically beef with my cousin. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, well, the hell with this. I'm not playing basketball anymore. That's how I got to football. And so I, I went there, and they were like, hey, we want to make you a tight end. I ended up becoming the number one tight end in the state of Texas. Damn. I was ranked in the top ten uh, as it pertains to players across the nation. Really? And uh, As a junior, senior? Uh, as, a, as a junior. As a junior. I got on – so I was, a, I was a freshman on JV, and then I got my first full scholarship. Yeah. By the, and this is, this is special. By the late, great uh, Joe Paterno. Penn State was the first school to offer me a full scholarship at 14. Wow. Uh, so that was pretty dope, wow. right? Uh, I, I could have been a Nittany Lion if I'd, if I'd have stayed loyal to it, right? But you, yeah, uh, uh, was it? Was uh, it uh, uh, hook them horns, horns, man. Okay. Yeah, hook them <laughs> horns, baby. Uh, so yeah, so so got into that. I got hurt, and, and the accident was um, it was it was pretty bad. Um, it stretched my perennial nerve, tore every L you could think of: LCL, MCL, wow. PCL, LMNOP, all what, of. What was the injury? How'd you get hurt? Uh, catching a ball. Took up the linebacker came, jumped on me, wrapped his leg around mine. I'm stiff arming him to get out of it, and uh, DB comes and hits me, hits on me the low. side. Yeah. So I, it, to this day, I think it was a hit because I, I was the the best player yeah. on the team. So we got to get him out by any means necessary. And I had never been tackled like that before, right? So it and is what it is. Converse Judson. I know we're, you're sitting down right now, but uh, Tony, he, he's an he's an imposing he's an imposing man. He's got a <laughs> massive physique. I'm I'm six three. Uh, uh, maybe six five six six wearing heels. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Prince Junior. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm looking at Tony, and he's big too, so uh, makes me look very small. But uh, yeah, you, have you always been this big? Were you like a man child when, when you're yeah. in your uh, junior high, high school? Yeah, yeah, man. In elementary, I was five ten, uh, like two hundred and five pounds, two hundred ten pounds in the fifth grade. You know, so it was, it was fifth grade. Yeah, I was, I was a grown man in the fifth grade. Like, yeah, <laughs> man. Beard in people man I, yeah, man, with a, with a baby voice, <laughs> yeah. right? People try to figure that out, like baby Tyson, like so. Yeah, oh, so I, I've always been big, man. I, I hit a growth spurt um, when I came back from Spain, and then I also lost. You know how you lose your baby fat. So I was like a skinny kid, man. I came I, when I came out of middle school. I was like six two. 
Um, when I when I came back, I was like six four and a half, yeah. but two thirty five. So I was real slim because all we did was hoop, like yeah. Barcelona, Valencia, Madrid. That's all we did all the whole time. So I lost all that weight. Was that, what, what type of team was that? You were traveling uh, internationally. Yes, yeah, the U.S. U.S. Junior Olympics team. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We came in second place. We lost to another American team. So I mean, they was older than us too. So it's all good. America's just dominating, right? Yeah, yeah. We first and second. We we, we did good. And that was in two thousand and two, because my no. I came out in 03. That would have been in 2000, 99, 2000. Was there like a different style of play from how Americans play basketball compared to oh. how Australians, oh, Europeans? Oh, yeah, 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 really? yeah man. It, it, we're flashy over here. Because Joseph, they just won the, the championship, right? Yep. They won the ship yesterday. The Nuggets won the ship, right? Exactly. So, but he's the arguably the number one guy versus uh, Embiid. Yeah, yeah. So, and, I, and I know Embiid. Both international, too. Yeah, but, and I know Embiid got the MVP, but like, you got to look at it like, uh, Jokic is more fundamentally sound, hmm. right? And that's how a lot of the players overseas are. Like here in America, it's a lot of talent. We flashy with it. You know, we go to the cup, we scoop, we Derrick Rose with it. They're, they're going to make the chess pass. They're going to make the right play. And so, like, you're running around with all that flash, and then you look up and get your ass kicked by 15, 20 points because, you know, yeah. they're hitting you with the, the backdoor passes and all the John Wooten system. <laughs> Everything <laughs> else is going on. So, But I, I, learned, I learned what good basketball is from, from, from there. Yeah. And, they, and those guys, they compete hard too, man. They compete. Yeah. So uh, that was the first time I'd ever been challenged like that. Because I used to hoop with uh, an AAU team called the Houston Hoops. So from the Houston Hoops, you had like Lanny Smith. A lot of people don't know him from his uh, – his, he has a brand. Uh, it's like a faith brand. Um, in Jesus' name, I play. I, IJNP or something like that. It's pretty big. Steph Curry was wearing it. Uh, you, you um, Michael Ume, Kendrick Perkins. Okay. You know, Indy Ebby, he played with the, t- the Timberwolves. So we had guys that came off that team that went on to do some great things. When you're looking at uh, – Okay, I mentioned a bunch of quarterbacks' names. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so obviously you you're, you're protecting them, and, mm. and you know they uh, they want you to take care of them. I had to stay the, upright. I, man, I had the honor, bro. That was an honor to be able to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. Like to say that I was able to accomplish that in my life is is, is pretty dope. Because linemen, linemen naturally, especially offensive linemen, don't yeah. get a lot of shine. No, no, no. And I'm cool with that though. Because, like, I saw Vince Young, uh, his come up. You know, that was sure. the guy I had in college, him yeah, and Cole Texas, McCoy. Yeah. yeah, like, dude, like, you can't go you can't anywhere. You played play with both of them. Yeah. So, Damn. for Vince, so we won the, the national championship in 05. So, I had Vince um, his last two years. And then, uh, Colt, we had him his, I had him his first two years. So, I was sat right in the middle of that. And so, when you see those guys, like, you, like you take your wife to a nice dinner. You're good. You can maybe get out and hang out a little bit. Some people will come up to you, but not crazy. Yeah. But, like, imagine you got to block off a whole room just to go out and have fun with your family. Yeah. I'm cool with that, man. I don't need that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, I, like, I like being the guy where they're like, he's big. I'm, he has a – hey, did you play? And then we can get in that conversation. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Makes sense, man. Makes sense. Yeah. So uh, – let me do a, let me do a quick speed round. I wasn't prepared, but since you, you brought it up, yeah, I want to do. I want to want you to bring up one attribute of these leaders because I, I consider a quarterback a leader. Yeah, and you got to be the leader of the team. Oh and, yeah. I mean, to make it in the NFL as a quarterback. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you had to beat a lot of guys. Yeah. Uh, to become a quarterback in in the NFL. Absolutely. What's what what would be one attribute? What the first thing that comes to mind when I rattle off these names? Okay. All right. Let's do okay. It. So let's let's start off with the uh, right here in Dallas, Romo. Man. Will to win. Okay. Yeah, he has a will to win, man. Like, I, I know his career didn't probably go like he wanted it, yeah. but it wasn't from a lack of effort. That yeah, man, I, 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 I respect it. I yeah. love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Tannehill. Perseverance. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, He had to overcome some things. A lot of people didn't think he could be a quarterback, and obviously you see what he's doing in Tennessee. So That's it. Because yeah. he, was, he, was, he got drafted by uh, Dolphins. Dolphins, right? yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Breeze. <sighs> a, man's, a man's man. <laughs> like, like real talk. Like, uh, this this man makes no excuses. He's the first one in. Funny story. Drew used to get in probably around three, four o'clock in the morning. Wow. I didn't know this. So, cause I would get in early too. I get in around four thirty, four forty five, and I was like, I'm gonna beat Drew here. I I got at the at the office at around four fifteen, four twenty. This man was already in a full sweat. I gave up. Full sweat. Full sweat. I gave up. And like, I'm like, no, I know you're married. I met your wife and you have kids. How are you doing this? Right? But he's just, he wants to be the greatest. And so that's what I actually learned from him. Like, you're capable of going farther than you ever thought you could imagine. Your brain can take you wherever you want it to go. So he's a full sweat. Yeah. And you got team meetings in the morning. Yep. And then you got practice. Oh, he's doing it. And he's staying after practice to throw extra balls. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he, yeah, like, but, but not, but you know what? Now you know why he's gonna go to the Hall of Fame, yeah, and you see sure. why he's a Super Bowl champion. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? So, 
and, and those those pregame speeches. Because <laughs> I, I remember when uh, Rivers yeah. was drafted, mm-hmm. or was it was it Eli that got drafted? He Eli got and they, yeah, yeah, he didn't want to go to to New York, right? To, to, to he, uh, Eli didn't want to go to uh, the Chargers. Chargers, Chargers, yeah, and they flipped it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah switched yeah. out, and so, and then Breeze was out. Yeah, so Breeze was out. So he he went. So he, I think he was only playing a couple years there in San Diego, and then he's out. Everybody thought. Well, he was, remember, he got hurt too. Right. That was that shoulder, shoulder injury. Yeah. yeah, so they counted him out, and then Sean Payton brought him down to New Orleans, and then it was a wrap. And then he's like, he's not, he's not stopping. No, he just, he just, he just kept, kept going. going. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And so, um, you know, when, you, when you're talking about uh, Breeze, uh, there, there's a lot of, of conversation about him of probably sticking around another year, or two years, because him and uh, and Brady. I was hearing a, a bunch of other uh, athletes in the NFL that talking about. That you know that last conversation they had on the field. Yeah, you know Brady's throwing, you know balls. To oh his, yeah, his I know kids, this. Right? I know this. Right? Yep. And so uh, <laughs> Brady goes back. You know they 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 finish the conversation. Yeah. They go back, and Brady's like, "I got, got him. him. I got his ass. <laughs> I got his ass. Like he, yeah. him. like he outlasted him. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He got him in the playoffs, man. And, yeah. and you know, obviously we know Tom's story and the type of competitor that he is. But I mean. Yeah, man, just to be able to compete against Tom and to play with Drew, man. I, that, I'm, like I said, that's an honor, bro. Wow. Uh, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's do uh, a couple of, couple of more, uh, three, a few more here. Right. How about Luck? Andrew Luck. Indy. <sighs> Where's kid? This, dude, this dude's intelligence was off the chain. You got to think he came in as a rookie. We went 11-5 and five and went to the playoffs. We lost to the Super Bowl champions at their house. Yeah. This dude, I mean, architect, his dad, Oliver. Was a quarterback, so he was bre- he was bred to be a quarterback, man, and a leader. Do you think he left the league too soon? I do not. I think his body did not help. They didn't do him justice with getting him protected. Wow. He, he got out exactly when he was supposed to. His his body was done, dude. Huh. You think about all the hits that he took. Yeah. And these are professional, like defensive players that are you know these guys are technology is different. The power yeah. is different. Yeah. So the fact that he was able to absorb those blows for that long, like you look at him now, like he looks like a guy that works at the you know the post office, man. The dude is <laughs> slim. Is, is he? Yeah, like he's lost okay. a lot of weight. Where, like, where did he, he relocated back to? I think he's in Houston. Okay. I haven't I haven't talked to him in a while, but I think he's in Houston. But like he looks good and he looks he sounds like he feels good. So yeah. I'm happy for him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of my personal favorites, Tim Tebow. We had him as a speaker uh, oh, a couple man. years ago. Oh, man. Uh, dynamic. Yeah. That's what I would say. So, because he's unorthodox, very, very unorthodox from the quarterbacks that you named. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, look, he's a winner. Yeah. You know, and, and like that season, we, we were like two and five or something. Uh-huh. And, dude, we won like six, seven games straight. In Kansas City, we threw the ball twice and beat them by a touchdown. We ran the ball like 50-something times, and he, <laughs> but we won. So the Tebow effect had everybody in there. <laughs> <laughs> Tebow. T- yeah. T- 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 the thing about Tebow, he maintained himself as a virgin yeah. until he got married. Yeah, that's so, hard. okay, let me, let me roll this back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High school, yep. stud high school quarterback. Correct. College, yep. in Florida. Florida. Yep. You know, like uh, college football god. Yep. Okay. Pros. Yep. Talk about self control, man. Yeah. That, I mean, when you said I held myself out for my wife. Yeah. I mean, you're you're, you're a faith you're a faith you're a faith based guy. I did not. I'm, a faith guy. Yeah. I, I'm just gonna throw that out there. I'm gonna be very <laughs> transparent right now. I did not do that. Um, you know, shout out to Tim, man. I, you know, I grew up a little different than he did, but that yeah, that's a thing. Gosh, man, to to have all that temptation around you and mm-hmm. be who you are to. Yeah. But did you know he was he was supposed to be aborted as a baby? I did not know. Yeah. That. Uh, wow. Uh, did you know he was born in the Philippines? I did know that. Oh, okay. Because it's a missionary, right? It's Correct. His parents were missionaries. So it was it was a clump in his mom's uh, uh, um, reproductive uh, her reproductive organs. It was just a clump. Wow. That's just for your health. You should, you know, it looks like a baby. You should abort it because it's not gonna. She goes, no. I think God's gonna work his thing. Mm-hmm. Next, you know, who, who who that clump become? Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. Man, <laughs> shout out to mom. Shout out to Miss Tebow. Man, that's you know, women have that thing, that innate ability to to know, like you know what, regardless of what you guys are telling me, I'm gonna stand strong in this, yeah. and it usually ends up working out. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, last but not least, Roethlisberger. Oh man, is he as big as you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's big. He's a big. Yeah. Man. He's a big toughness. Yeah, that's what that's Roethlisberger, man. It's toughness, man. You know, we, listen. If I'm supposed to do a drop back at three, I might do two. If I'm supposed to do a drop back at seven, I might do six. If I'm supposed to let the ball go at three or four seconds, I might hold on to it. At the end of the day, I'm gonna make the play. 
<laughs> and what I, I'll, I'll never forget this. We were in the offensive line room, and he walked in, and he was like, uh, hey, guys, I know they're writing things about you, the offensive line, because you know, we're not protecting them. So I know they're writing things about you. Um, don't worry about that because I'm going to make the plays, and we're going to be okay. Yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. So basically – He's going to hold on to the ball. Yeah. Hold on to your man as long as you can. That's what, I, that's, what, that's what I got from it, right? So I was like, all right, let's make it happen. And then, you know, 2008, man, we won the Super Bowl. And I got to, I got to be, have a front row seat to that because that was my rookie year. I wasn't yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah. But I got to have a front row seat to what that looks like, yeah. that whole ride. Like yeah. the NFL, man, is, it's, it's a whole different beast, bro. You know what I mean? And for those people that make it and for those people that last long, yeah. I mean, let alone if you establish yourself there, yeah. dude, that, that's a different mentality. Can you show the ring to the camera? Oh, man, I, don't, I, man, I should have brought the Super Bowl ring. I got this. Is, oh, okay, this, I'll show okay. this one. This okay. is the national championship ring right here. Texas. Texas. Uh-oh. Uh, so, yeah. So people they, would love to see that. They would love to see that because, listen, this is us against USC, man. So when we yeah. were having a battle about who has the best football, that year we proved it. You it's know what I mean? Yeah. So shout out to VY. and Was, uh, was Bush? And uh, you see it. Yeah, Reggie why? Bush, Lindell White. Oh, wow. uh, um, Who's the quarterback there? Uh, Matt Leinart. <laughs> yeah, these guys were stacked. Mike Williams was the receiver. Gosh. Yeah, they had yeah. they had a lot of guys, man. Or Matt Leinart, man, never combed his hair. No. Just, just mm -mm. Up in no. Places. Probably in a lab, man, studying somewhere, man. A... You're talking about pregame speech. Yeah. Uh, um, so you're talking about Breeze having the best pregame oh, yeah. speech. So off of, if you were to if you give a leader's bulletin, of of best pregame speeches, uh, where oh. would you rank the guys we just met? Romo, Tannehill, Breeze, Luck, Tebow, Roethlisberger. All right, I would say I would say you're gonna go Breeze one. You're gonna go Tebow. You're gonna go Tebow two. Tebow has some pretty good things. Um, then you got to go just by just by personality. You go with Roethlisberger, and then you go with Luck because Luck didn't really he didn't really do a lot of pregame speech. Okay. He just went out there and got it done. Got it. You know what I mean? And then when, when I was there with him, too, he was a rookie, too. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, got so it. It's, it's a, it's a different speak up much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and for, for Ben, he had taken over, but really, like, our defense was the leader of that team. Like, you had all, you had Dick LeBeau, 60-something yeah. years in the league. Yeah, Harrison over there. Yeah, Harrison and Casey Hemp. Like, on our defense alone, there was over 100 years of experience. That's crazy. We, you and I were hanging out at, uh, was, uh, was it Komodo downtown yeah, in Dallas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Ryan Clark comes walking by. That's my guy. RC, right? Yeah. And it's, you guys just like, Psh. Yeah. Is, is it like that as, as NFL players, a fraternity like that? Is it just closeness? Yeah, what it is is that, like, man, at the end of the day, no matter what level, what level you were on, at the end of the day, you guys shared something. Y'all played on that grass and y'all sacrificed your body. Whatever the hierarchy is, is the hierarchy. Yeah. And I think that it's a mutual respect for people that have done it because it's just like it's no different, you know, with you being in the, in the military. Like yeah. you, know, you guys meet other people that have served, there's a certain language and bond that you guys speak. Y'all yeah. might have not even been in the same infantry, yeah. but you know what it's like. Yeah. And so when you see that, it's all, it's all love. You yeah. know what I mean? It's the same thing when I met Marshawn Lynch. I had never met Marshawn. But me and him chopped it up. I, you know, I let him know where I played and, and all that stuff. And we yeah. dapped it up. It was cool. Met him at the Super Bowl. Great dude. Very cool, man. Yeah. Very cool. So is, is there a formula for a pregame season? Like, if I want to, you know, if I want to rally my troops, if I, I want to hype up my guys. Yeah. I, you know, so so as a lineman, like, so we go back to Texas. As a lineman being the leader on that, on that team, like, for me, it was just about being in the moment. You know what I mean? Just remembering like the work that we put in, that we were built for this time, uh -huh. you know? And I think that it's a reminder of, like, you know when you're a team that put in the work. And so you just remind the guys, hey, listen, we're just going out here to do what we've already been doing. You know what I mean? We're going to relax, we're going to play, and at the end of the day, nobody's coming in our house and taking food off our plate. And there's some other explicitives that go on in there too, <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, like, the message is, is received and you go out there and do work. And, at the, and it's not even really about, and I know, you, you know, I'm a, all the youth coaches in the world are going to look at me and be like, what is this guy talking about? It's not about the wins or the losses. It's never about the wins or losses come a dime a dozen. It's about the effort to be able to compete. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. about the, it's about the will to do the best you can do every single snap because you know you don't want to let your brother down. Yeah. The chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. Some you win, some you lose, some. But those are the things you can truly control. You know? Gotcha. When when um, when you guys are are are, are uh, putting yourself you know, mentally preparing for the game, mm. um, and it, we just like a couple weeks ago we did the, the, the Memorial Day Murph. We did the Murph workout. I saw that man. Oh yeah, yeah I need yeah, an yeah. invite to that no, joint, oh, bro. For sure. Next for year sure, you yeah. got to get me on, My man. man. That's, yeah, yeah. Okay. that looked like it was gonna be some. <laughs> hey, I like that. So it's a mile run. Okay. And then you got to do, after that, you got to do 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 
air squats. You break them down? Yeah, of course. Of okay, course. Okay. You break them all down. Right, all right. And then you wrap all this stuff up with another mile run. Yeah. Right? So it's basically it's a CrossFit workout for a Navy SEAL, which is Lieutenant Murph. That's why it's called the Murphy Workout. Wow. Murphy workout. Yeah, Lieutenant Murphy was killed in, in uh, Afghanistan in uh, the movie uh, uh, Lone Survivor. Uh, that, that's that's oh okay that's about that's about it was that the one with uh, Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg yeah. oh yeah, yeah 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 okay yeah. got you but uh, he he survived because he was playing the trolls he was playing the trolls um, as a Navy SEAL yeah but his commander was Lieutenant Michael Murphy was trying to make you know the radio call in because the satellite phone was working mm. and while it was at the top that's when it, that's when the Taliban got him yeah so but anyway the, my, my point is my my stomach was and right, not because we had to do this workout so what, what's likely your I've always been curious. What's your pregame meal? Yeah. When do you eat that? How far in advance of the game? And yeah. what, what, what do you do? What's your What's your playlist? What's yeah. your pregame? Yeah, yeah. The whole The whole night. So, so yeah. For me, man. So you get up in the morning. I get up. Obviously, you know, I gotta thank God for waking me up. So that's my prayer time. Um, I might go get in like a light, like a little light stretch or workout, like a walk the treadmill, something. Just kind of get the body, you know, in motion. When it comes to food, bro, it's gonna be pasta and chicken and veggies. That's that's how I always was. Okay. Pasta, chicken, and veggies. Yeah, uh, like that's like breakfast then, because if you're playing at noon. Well, if you're playing a noon game, pasta, chicken, and veggies. If you're playing a noon game, then I might do like I might do like one pancake and then fruits and a little bit of egg. I'm really light on the breakfast. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I know I'm gonna get to that pasta, chicken, and veggie at some point. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, so I'm light on the veggie, man. I want to put too much on the stomach, you know. Um, and then after that, you know, you just you, you get in, you go over the plays, and then you just listen. And my playlist uh, is going to be a mixture of I'm going to have a little gospel in there. I'm going to have a little hip hop. I'm going to have yeah. a little, you know, R&B. Yeah. You know, just just a little vibe to kind of, you know, ride that little emotional roller coaster, but okay. work on my stoic, you know, yeah. stoicism. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm just staying calm in the midst of all of that. Uh, and then really, man, when you get on when you get on the field you know, for that pregame, it's all hype from there for me. It's yeah. all hype. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. listening to the craziest thing that I can <laughs> that I can listen yeah. to to get my mind to understand you about to go into a battle. Yeah. Right. And then and then from there it's just it's it's calm. You're locked in. Yeah. You're locked in and, and you're going out there and you're competing. And that's just what that's how I, that's how I worked. What was the toughest transition for you when you realized that uh, this might be the end of your career? What was what was that moment? Who, shoot. Who's, whose team were you on? Man, uh shoot. Well I realized it might be the end of my career was the Pittsburgh when I got drafted. <laughs> I was like, man, this is not going the way that I that I planned. <laughs> that like, right? yeah, I mean, you got yeah, I think like I go up there and the first person that I go against is James Harrison. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I might not be as good as I thought, you know. Yeah. And so like that, that's a, that's a confidence deflator. But you know, as you continue to get better and you continue to learn the game, you know, you continue to grow. And then those guys, man, shout out to my teammate because they they Troy Palomalu was a dude that really sat me down and like calmed me down a lot. Really? Yeah, man. Like a defensive guy. Overconnect four. Out of all the things, like he would, like he would stay. Now, keep mind you, this man is married. I'm just this young kid. This man is married, got his own kids. He stayed after, and he gave me the game on like how it was for him. He's like, man, I was drafted in the first round. He said every day I, I thought I was gonna get cut. He's like, I was terrible. I didn't know the plays. I was busting coverages. I was like, these guys are gonna cut me. He's like, just relax and remember that it's just football. And so from that conversation, that sparked it. To answer your question. Though, because it, it comes full circle. Um, it was like good nine years, right? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. In 2017, when I was in Detroit, I knew that that was it, because I was just going through the motions. I was in great shape, right? I, they wanted me to lose like, uh, like five pounds. I lost ten. Yeah. You know, they uh, they had this, you know, this trial run for for off season or whatever. I smoked it. I was running with the linebackers, man. It would, getting in shape and working out was nothing for me, but mentally, I, I wasn't there. Like I go out on the football field, I'm, I'm not. There's no passion. I'm only. I'm, I'm blocking these guys, but I'm blocking them because I have years of experience and technique. Yeah. yeah. It's not about like really being. I'm, I'm a passion guy. Mm -hmm. And so once I seen that that was gone, I was like, yeah, it's time to hang it up. So before training camp, I went up to Detroit, gave him the signing bonus back, and was like, hey man, I appreciate really? the opportunity. I'm out. Wow. On my on my brother's wedding day, I retired. Wow. <laughs> so you can imagine, he's like. But if we don't do that. You should have did it the game before, right? So he was upset, but um, <laughs> but I didn't know. Like yeah. I literally woke up that morning and was like, yeah. "Yeah, I'm done." Were you, were you always good with your money? Because I know you're personal. You're in the financial literacy no, phase right now. No, so okay. so uh, my my rookie year, man, I was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt. Oh. Here's why. Okay. So uh, Lloyd's of London, and I don't know if I'm breaking, hitting the game up, but Lloyd's of London gave me a loan based off of the projection of where I was going to be drafted. I was I was told 
by Norv Turner, I'm throwing names out, <laughs> by Norv Turner that I was going to San Diego in the third round, all right? So I'm sitting on draft day like, okay, the first two rounds can go. I already know where I'm going, right? Yeah. Maybe there's a chance that mm-hmm. I sneak in that second late one, but if not, it's all good. But if it did, would you get with that $250,000 loan? Oh, it wouldn't have mattered. It was, okay. In the third round, it wasn't going to matter, Okay, good. right? And so when they, they drafted it, I'll never forget this, they drafted Jacob Hester, which was a fullback out of LSU. Made no sense to me. They walked me through there. The GM came down the whole nine. This is when I found out the NFL is really a business. They'll tell you anything. Usually fullbacks don't get drafted. No, not that high. Yeah. So, you know, no no knock to Jacob. He was a great player. Yeah. Um, but so that happens. So now I don't know where I'm going. So as you continue to slide, the the, the farther you drop, the, le- the more money you lose, right? Because it's, it's sliding scales for finances. So when I got my so when I got my signing bonus, the signing bonus was nice. But then I found out about an uncle that I never knew. Uh oh, yeah, okay. Sam, Uncle Sam. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when that happened, that put me in the negative. Wow. And so I was like, from there, I was it was swimming uphill. So it took me like probably two, almost two years to get back. Right, and so I was. I was fortunate. So why, why are they giving these loans to begin with? I have no clue. You, 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 I'm twenty. I'm a twenty-some year old kid. I'm like, yo, I need money. So were they at the campus? Are they at the combine? Or no, 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 no. My uh, agent. There, there, there was a person that I worked with that um, that got that opportunity for me. I don't know how they did it. Got it. Right. There was. I was just like, look, man, I'm. I don't have no money, and so they got a loan based off of my projection. I don't know if Lois of London does this anymore, but yeah. that's what they did for me then. Wow. And so uh, when that happened, I was like, shoot, I don't know. Give a 20 some year old kid, you know, $250,000. Yeah. Everybody getting something. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like we made it, right? So what's a, what's a fourth round uh, offensive tackle get as a signing bonus? Man, I signed my, my signature is worth uh, a little over half a million dollars. Okay. So yeah. uh, how much of that was taken out in taxes? Shoot, probably. <laughs> From Uncle Sam. Yeah. So you're in that tax bracket. So you're looking at around 40. Two percent of Easy. that is gone, yeah. Yeah. right? And we're W two, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and this is the thing too. The first thing that's taken off. Yeah, yeah, so it's gone. You get the check. Here's the thing that's crazy though, right? You know when you travel, you have to pay taxes in every state that you travel. Jack tax. That's it. Right. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So when we were getting the checks from that season. I was having to pay taxes for all of those different spaces wow. too, so the money wasn't like flowing like that. So no, so so Pennsylvania taxes you another three percent. Mm-hmm. So you get your federal income tax, yep. and then Pennsylvania charges you another three percent. Yep. You play in California. We did. So that's uh, back then. It's probably over ten percent. It's three thirteen point six now. If you make over a million bucks in, in California. So so and in one season we played. Uh, we had uh, San Diego and we played the 49ers. California. So you went back twice. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. And then, and then um, you guys get a game check at the game, right? In your lockers, is, is that customary? So, like how that is yeah, it's right? customary. So, so yeah. you can get you can get the game check or you can get direct deposit, right? Okay. okay so, yeah. so I, the first my first year I was getting game checks, and then they told me about direct deposit. I was like, yeah, I want that. <laughs> yeah, you give me these little tabs later. I just want it right now. I want to see it right now. Yeah. So we went to direct deposit. But yeah, it was okay. man, it's, it's crazy. Like you need to have some sense of financial education. That, that has to be implemented in these schools, man. Yep. Because, like, you got to think about it. A lot of these kids come from impoverished places, yep. right? Uh, obviously, you know, you, you, you want to take care of mom. You want to take care of your family. So, But when you don't understand how money works and you don't understand how they're looking to take the money that they give you back, mm-hmm. um, it, it, can, it can destroy you, which is why the percentages are what they are, right? Mm-hmm. Like 78% of... NFL athletes are broke two to twelve years after retirement. Yeah, well, it's probably shorter than like two to five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 because the a lot of them are start, still living a, uh, some sort of lifestyle that they lived when they played. Mm-hmm. The money's not coming in, so if yeah. the money's not coming in like that, and it's just leaving. Right. Then there's a deficit, and then you got to think about like all of the different financial advisors that have been exposed from stealing money from yeah. players and things of that nature too. So there's it's a it's a it's a it's a sad thing. To think that you. you put your body through that mm-hmm. to get yourself to that opportunity, and now it's all gone. So, to the NFL players potentially watching this right now, they just got drafted. Draft was just in April. Yeah. So you put your uncle head on, mm. uncle, uncle Tony. All right, here we go. What are you telling an NFL player right now? I just took my son to the rookie premiere here yeah. with the Cowboys. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm living vicariously through that, right? Like yeah, my, yeah. my son's enjoying. I'm looking at his face. I've never been around this type of environment before myself. And yeah. This is a look on his face. 
But what are you telling these NFL players right now? They got to check what, what type of money they got coming in. What would you advise them to do with their? So, so, so the first thing is like you always looked at. You know, you get a financial advisor. The financial advisor has the guys they want to put you in these different investments. If I'm if if I'm looking back, if somebody would have told me, listen, before you make any moves, you need to understand what moves you're making. The safest place you can warehouse your capital is in cash fi- cash value life insurance. Period. The reason being is because you still have access to it whenever you need it, right? But it's growing compounded contractually mm-hmm. without any break. So now when, that, when you put that money up, say you come across an investment opportunity, you don't have to worry about, okay, yeah, I want to make more money. Let me go ahead and hit that. Mm-hmm. No, you already got that. It's, it's, it's doing well over here. Yeah. Let's learn about this now. So your money's still earning yeah. while you're learning. That would have been the first thing because, you know, they kick out the, those annual dividends. Uh-huh. So, like, depending on how much money you're stuffing in here, now you can create your own six-figure income stream. So now when we get out, we, we've been just been stuffing money into this thing there you go. for years, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So now I've already created that passive, that passive revenue that I'm going to need yeah. when I get out of the league on top of learning what type of investments I want. Because you don't even know you're 20-something years old. You don't even know what type of investor you are. Are you, are you a risk taker? Are you adverse risk? You know, do, you like, do you like real estate? Mm-hmm. You might not even like real estate. You just go on Instagram and everybody says real estate. Real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or a couple years ago, everybody saying crypto. Crypto, right? Or NFTs. Yeah. yeah, you see how that goes, yeah. right? So like, you gotta, you, you, it'll give you time to figure out what kind of investor you are while being able to make your money. And then budget, right? Mm-hmm. Like for me, I, I live off the 50-30-20. 50, 30, 50, 30, 20. Love right? it. Right? So 50% takes care of the house. Yeah. 30% is your wants. That's your, call that, that, 30, that 30, we call that the blow the bag money. Right? <laughs> B2B, man. Here's your B2B, bro. 30% of what you made, do, go live. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that 20%, we're not touching that. Yeah. Let's put that 20 up and let's see what that 20 does as we continue to, you know, go gotcha. through, this, through this experience. You know, there's, uh, it's funny you say uh, cash value life insurance, but listen, if I'm a 20, 21, 22 year old rookie, I'm not going to die anytime soon. Mm-hmm. What do I need life insurance? I'm so young. I, I don't plan on dying. Yeah. What would you, what would you say? Yeah. So, like that? so that's the, that's the misconception, mm-hmm. right? The misconception is you, you're looking at it and say, listen, it's called life insurance, not yeah. death insurance, right? right? And so for them, when I'm talking to them, I'm like, okay, what's important to you? Because I always start with the why. Yeah. Right. And that's and that, that's that's Simon Sinek. Right. Start with why. Yep. Right. What is what is what is an intrinsic value that you have? Well, I want to take care of this person. I want to take care of that person. All right. Let me show you how money works. If we create this entity, it kicks off what's called passive income. That yeah. means that money is always coming, bro. Yeah. So you'll never get hurt. So you start you start amping them up. You ain't going to never get hurt. You're going to have a 15 you know year career. I get it. Because they're 21. What you going to tell a super soldier, right? Uh, that, that, he, that he can't yeah, get out yeah, there yeah. and get it done? Yeah. So you, you say, so, so say that's the greatest thing that ever happens. At some point, you're going to retire. At some point, these checks are going to stop. But if you create an entity that's built up like the checks that you're getting, then you'll never have to worry about running out of money. And that's when the light bulb goes on. Yeah. Right? And then you start small. I think a lot of times with a lot of financial advisors, like they, they, they go after the gusto, but that's because... They have to make money off the player's money, mm-hmm. right? You and I being insurance guys, if we walk into there and they say, okay, anybody in the finance space, I want you to raise your hand if my player's money is the money you need to make you money. We'll be the only one sitting there with our hands <laughs> down, right? Because we get paid by the insurance company. For sure. Right? Not out of the player's money. Exactly. So everything that we're doing is truly in their best effort because with us, we deal with our niche market is, the, we call it legacy banking, but infinite banking space. That's our niche. That's what we do. We want you to hold on to this. Yeah. So we're going to make sure that it's designed to fit your lifestyle without any, any inter- interruptions. So now if something does happen, then you have a security blanket to tap into to take care of that issue. And then we get right back on track. Gotcha. So, uh, by the way, I want to go over this uh, Instagram post. Because, okay. Because... Um, it does talk about the, about financial products, and I, I want us to provide a commentary. Let's do it uh, to this because uh, I think this guy has got a point, but at the same time, too, I think he's wrong. Okay. So um, can we can we go to my screen? Okay, cool. So this guy, I'm actually following. He's a CPA, brilliant guy. He's he's been he's got millionaire status by the time he was thirty. Yep. God bless him. He he uh, he didn't come from anything, and mm. he worked himself up, went through school, and nice. but he, he says here financial products you can't trust. IULs are stands for Index Universal Life. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 matter of fact let's unpack this one one by one. So okay. IUL, okay. By okay. the way, he says oh, uh, uh, I know bold claim, but one out of one hundred situations where I see people have these products, maybe one is done the right way. Maybe I want you to make you smarter financially. So let's break down how to determine if they're worth it. Okay. okay? So number one, every investment need makes uh, needs a comparison to see if it's worth it. In this case, we'll use the S and P five hundred oh, standard Poor's yes. five hundred top companies. Historically, it's turned ten percent. 
uh, for this example, say 8%. Now, here's the thing. I'll start with this. Okay. Tell me what time frame, the day you start and the day you end, that it will actually average 10. Well, see, that's the, that's the thing. And, 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 and this is the other thing, too, because you, you're giving me the averages, yeah. right? How much money, if, if, you, if you put $100,000 in mm-hmm. to, the, to the speculation market, yep. properly Jordan. Uh, understood, mm-hmm. and you lose 50, what do you have to return in order to get back to zero? 100. Thank you. Yeah. So how much money have you lost compared yeah. to these and, particular and products? In time. In time. Yeah. In time. Yeah. So, yeah, so that, that's, that's the one thing that I'll say. Two, when he talks about, um, he, he said something that I agree with. He says that they have to be properly structured the yeah. correct way. Yeah. And I think you and I can both agree to this. Some people get into this industry because they see the amount of money they can make mm-hmm. and they don't really take it seriously and they don't do the work that's needed to understand their products. So there are some people that are out there constructing these things the same way. It's the same way you have CPAs yeah. that might not be the best at what they're doing because right. they're looking at the dollar amount as opposed to looking out for their client. Yep. So across the board, there's going to be some situations. It's all about strategy. Yep. Right? And a lot of CPAs are trained to look at the rear of your mirror. But what happened, yep. our job is to forecast what can, can happen. Can happen, exactly. So, so yeah, listen, again, this, I, like, I, I like to have this as a debate. It's not an, it's not an argument. I'm not at your throat. Yeah. But I think if you can put a post like this, yep. you got to really unpack it. But he can't because yeah. Yeah. it's Twitter, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 Instagram, Instagram, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. He, he would have to do a video to really unpack that. Sure. Yeah, right. And by the way, great post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's controversial yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. but... I love um, it. We're talking about it. <laughs> because, because last year, if you wanted to average 10%, yep. and you happen to retire in 2022, you would have lost 19.7%. 19.7% and lost. And I, and I know that for a fact because some of my friends are financial advisors. And I've seen I've seen their portfolios. Now their portfolios against the market was pretty good, yeah. right? And that, that's that's kudos to them for what they did. Yeah. But you still lost nineteen point seven percent. And how you can make that back up? So you need approximately a thirty five percent return just to get you back to square one. Yep. And then two years just went by also. So so now let's talk about let's talk about with okay. So we're specifically talking about IUL index yeah. universal. Life, yeah. Let's right? let's go back to the screen okay. here. All right. So cool. let's go back to the screener. You're, you're, you're familiar with this. Yeah. Uh, these are usually sold as pipe dream of investment and insurance. By the way, I agree with him. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not supposed to be sold as investment insurance. Correct. You know, uh, for the primary uh, premise of any life insurance policy is death benefit and also capital preservation. Mm-hmm. It's not supposed to be beating the S&P 500. Correct. I, I agree with them on that. Yeah, absolutely. But when you run the numbers, though, term life plus investing the difference almost always wins. I also have to disagree there. I disagree with that emphatically. Yeah. Emphatically. Yeah. There is a place for term. Every, mm-hmm. Okay, first, before I, I say I this, everything's about strategy. Mm-hmm. There is a place for term. However, you know this, I know this, I, and I think it's even gone up now. It was 97. I think 98% of term policies don't pay out. Because? Actuaries. Yes, right. Can we get into the actuaries? <laughs> These are guys that are, that are put in place that, that research economic history from all the way to the 1800s up to now that are supposed to protect the insurance company. So if you're getting, if you're 20 years old, I have no problem getting you a 30-year policy. They're, they're daring you to get a policy, right? Yes. <laughs> Please get a policy. Yes. If you have to understand, it's like about, it's like renting a house, right? And so like you're betting against the insurance that you're going to pass away between these 30-year spectrum. Yeah, and they're 20 betting to 50, that, yeah. yeah. And they're, yeah. they're betting that you're not, yeah. right? And so like I agree with, I agree with some of the things he's saying, but when it comes to that, no. I think that when you use term in a blended space yeah. and you, you pair it with other things yeah. to be able maybe to bring the premium downs on whole lives or things like that, I think that that's a great strategy. But I wouldn't just say term is the end-all, be-all, yeah. buy term, invest the rest. I, I, I don't know. Because the premise that. also is my investments yes. is going to also outweigh what my death benefit is going to be, and now I'm quote-unquote self-insured. Yeah. Right? But what do we recognize it as 20, 30 years? Tell me the perfect time when this cash value or the the, 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 the difference yes. is supposed to equal what your life insurance so it can fall off. And so therefore you don't need life insurance anymore. So 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 the biggest thing too is about when we're talking about con- the consistency of return and not losing money, right? Yeah. So like uh, uh, yeah, Doug Andrews, right? The zero sure. is your hero. For sure. Right? And I know yeah. like Transamerica, they have products too that um, they, they cap at around 25% and they have a floor of like 2 or 3%. So there's even though you're not outperforming, at the end of the day, there's never a loss. Yeah, you're always advancing forward. Always advancing. It's like forward. you. It's like you as an offensive player. Every time Roethlisberger hands it off to uh, uh, a uh, running back yeah, from yeah. from Minnehaha, Illinois, yeah, Minnehaha, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a four or five year gain. 
Correct. Three of those plays in a row. Get first you a down. first down. Same thing, same thing with absolutely. life insurance, right? Absolutely. I, absolutely. I agree with that a thousand percent. Yeah. We may not have the, uh, you know, the deep pass play. Yeah. Right? We, may, we, we might get a five-yard hitch. Yeah. Right? But, but you want to know what? All of those plays are still in the game plan. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's, that's what I'm saying. That's it's right. about strategy. Yeah. Like, no, nowhere are we saying this is the end. I, I tell people all the time and I tell my team, listen, we're an end-end category. Yeah. We want you to do us and yeah. go do something else. Yeah. Right? So that's how I look at it. Yeah, and plus, you know, when, when I'm able to know that my money is supposed to be there, no matter what, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, I could be a little bit more aggressive and adventurous in other things. Yes, you can. So, you know. Yeah. It, uh, it's it's a part of the strategy. IULs part of the strategy. So, Correct. Uh, Joel, let's, let's continue on here as well. IULs are an insurance salesman dreaming an underperforming asset. The best I can't agree with this because for 24 years I've been in, in the insurance business. Mm-hmm. I've been through two recessions. Mm-hmm. Actually, three now because the 01 dot com bubble. I've been through the 07 09 great recession. Yeah. I've been through the pandemic, the flash recession. I've been through it all. None of my clients, including my own mother, has lost any money inside IULs and annuities. And so that's why she's retired today. Let me go to the next one. Annuities. Speaking of annuities. I have an annuity. Yeah, sure. I have NFL. Annuities. Yeah. I love it. Pench, if you have a pension, you yeah. have an annuity. Yeah. So uh, that's because sales people get paid, managers get paid, then your money is invested. Um, listen, you know, again, back to the insurance. The mis- misnomer is insurance agents selling annuities gets paid from your cash value of your policy. Mm-hmm. Incorrect. Because if a hundred, let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars. Let's say today you can take a hundred thousand. For example, one of my clients in New York, under uh, um, my office over there, they just sold a laundromat. Okay. Put five hundred thousand dollars into an annuity. Okay. From day one, guess how much is in an annuity? Five hundred thousand dollars. Yep. Now the the the, the commission was, was uh, around twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, but they didn't come from the client's money. No. Where did it come from? Come from the marketing budget of the insurance company. Thank you. So, but if I had that inside a Manage portfolio. You're paying. <laughs> and, 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 and that's why we have to have these conversations. Yeah. Everything is fee based. Yeah. This is how they make their money. Yeah. Right? So like if I so 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 if we're gonna tell it if we're gonna tell it, let's tell it all, right? We have the insurance companies that pay us for a product that we sell to our to our customers or to our clients, right? right. That's how we get paid. When you talk about annuities here, but most insurance agents are getting paid off of premiums. And some, there are some products where you get like a small percentage off of cash value dump-ins. There are some, there are some of those. But it's, it's, there's, there's no fee to manage the money. Right. And on top of that, can we talk about how like we have a set it and forget it model? For sure. Right? Uh, so, guaranteed, income, guaranteed income writers. So, yeah. so if that's the case, and, and, and if that's the case, then we really have to look at all of this in, in, in comparison as a whole and say, okay, look, at the end of the day, this is a great strategy. Investments are a great strategy. You have to invest. Yeah. But I think that we have to do a better job with giving the people the understanding of what goes on in that. Yeah. You know, our, our CPA is telling them, hey, listen, we're going to have these, this fee is for this, this yeah. fee is for this, this fee. Because I'm very transparent yeah. when we deal with our clients. Like, hey, yeah. we get paid off of premium. We get paid off of cash sure. value. This is what your money does. There's a percentage of that within the first few years that mm-hmm. is, is a cost of insurance. It goes to X, Y, and Z. Like, be open sure. with, with all of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Disclose it. Yeah. And by the way, there's different types of annuities, too, as well. There are. So what he's talking about here, salespeople get managed to get paid, then your money's invested. Yeah, I think he's talking about variable annuities. And that's yeah. different because that operates through what? Through the, speculation. The, yep. And, uh, and, and uh, you need to be securities licensed. Correct. You need to be series 663. Correct. So those financial advisors, which I discovered aren't much financial advisors at all. No. They're glorified mutual fund salespeople, or in this case, uh, glorified uh, uh, variable annuity salespeople. But specifically, what you and I are talking about right now is fixed and index annuities. Correct. Which is not part of this definition. Yes, it's different. Next one, whole life. You're, you're an expert in whole life. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, but he's pretty sarcastic in those. They call it whole life because you'll be spending your whole life recovering from it. <laughs> <laughs> life insurance guys are the it. most cutthroat on this planet. Uh, you think they're going to let you get a better return than the market? It's When you put money inside life insurance, you're not supposed to beat the market. Again, it's the capital preservation model. But you beat the market when you don't lose, though. Yeah, you you well. So it's it's an overtime thing, right? So if you look at within the last, if you look at if you if you compare a whole life product within the last 30, 40 years versus just uh, uh, any any sort of investment, okay, yeah, you're you're not going to beat that investment on certain years when you have 50, 60, 70 percent returns, right? But eventually, it's the tortoise and the hare situation, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you're running fast, but so when we get to the when we get to the uh, finish line, mm-hmm. it's a wrap. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. So like, I look at it and say, I, I look at it and say this. Like, we have to understand what type of products we're talking about, 
right? I'll give you an example. So we, we, one of the brokers that we work with is called Guardian. Guardian has a phenomenal product. It's called the Index, uh, the, uh, Index Whole Life. Right. Mm-hmm. But the index, which, you know, these guys would chomp at the bit at. It's like, oh, it's index. Right. Yeah. But and no, whole life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like it's index. Right? So, no, it doesn't have anything to do with the market. The index is based off of the return that they it's a mutual life insurance company, meaning that they, the investors is the premium holder. Yeah. Not, not the stock market, not, not the Wall stock Street. market, not the Wall Street. So there's not another hand in the cookie jar. The index is based off of the return that the insurance company makes that year. So they determine what they're going to give on top of their contractual, like about five and a quarter or anything like that. That's where the index is at, Mm -hmm. right? So why is that important? Well, the last three years or four years, excuse me, they've capped out at around 11.5%. What was the market doing the last three or four years, sure. right? So um, though, that's, that's the savings grace right there. Yeah. It's like, okay, I took a hit here, but I'm okay here, yeah. right? That's the balance. That's all we are. We're a balancing act. You know what I mean? And this is also presuming that Americans done a good job of saving for retirement. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't. Yeah, You're about, you about to go. You're about to get into something. Bro, you know, this is assuming that mom and dad <laughs> did the job of paying off the mortgage. Yeah. Putting money inside the 401k, yeah. having a pension, no debt when they retire. Yeah. What's the reality? Everybody's broke, bro. Yeah. People are broke today. Yeah. And so. Well, the, the country is 31, 31, $32 trillion in debt, too. That's right. So we're not just talking about the people. We're talking about our whole country. Yeah, that's right. We're in debt. And so I think the last stat was 53 million people are underinsured. It's yeah. A lot, of, it's a lot of people are underinsured. Correct. And what's evidence of that? GoFundMes. Yep. What's evidence of that? People are asking around the fastest way to divide families, divide siblings is when they have to pay for mom and dad's funeral. Yeah. Because they're going to look at each other like, you didn't pay your share, you didn't pay your share. And next thing you know, they don't talk for the rest of their life because they're financially mad at each other. Correct. They know how to heal from that. Well, whole life is a great final expense chassis mm-hmm. to get a policy when mom and dad are still alive. Yeah. And you buy a very small final expense whole life policy to yep. make sure that when that time does come, that the siblings have the money to pay for the funeral. So therefore, we can honor and celebrate mom and dad's life. I have I have a uh, a client um, who prior to me had already experienced that. Wow. Right, they had lost somebody, yeah. and so what had happened was, and, and unbeknownst to them, um, their their mom got a whole life policy on the wife, right, and then the wife passed away, yeah. right, unexpectedly. Yeah. And so the father was working 40, 30, 30 40, 50,000 dollars a year somewhere in that. Sam, how am I going to pay for this, right? And yeah. that's when the mom stepped up and said, "Hey, listen, this is what we something that we did. Yeah. Unbeknownst to you, we, she did this." Yeah. Right? And so they were able to take care of that. Yeah. And you know, and he was able to have a little money come to him and help with the kids and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Because I, I just lost my wife, I got three kids, we got to figure this out, yeah. right? So that was a saving grace. So it, it goes beyond just you, you're talking about the market and all of that stuff. Like we're talking about life too. Yeah. Like the one thing that we can't get past here is what death and taxes. Sure. So to be able For to sure have thing. this set up mm-hmm. is a great it's a great tool. Again, it's I'm going to go back to this word. It's a it's a great strategy yep. to be able to handle that portion of life on top of being able to warehouse your market, your warehouse your money in a safe space. Because where are you going to put it? You going to put it in the banks? <laughs> and they're potentially going to fail. Yeah. And by the way, where do the banks put their money? And insurance. insurance. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and, and we know this because we, we're in we're that business, space. Yeah. But, but it's just like... FDIC, Federal Depository Insurance Corporation. Well, Boley. Boley Bank on Life Insurance. insurance. Yeah. Coley. Corporate, Corporate on Life, life Insurance. insurance. <laughs> so, it's like, so we can keep going, right? Like, we're in the same place, baby. Yeah. So you know, the, the, thing, the thing, too, is... What, let's, let's take on whole life real quick. Yeah. There's premiums you can pay called 10 pay whole life yep. or 20 pay whole life. Yep. That you pay for 10 premiums yep. or 20 premiums. Mm-hmm. Guarant- and and from, from them going forward, let's say you pay 10 for 11 years all the way till you, pa- you, you pass on yep. or 20 years until you pass on, you never have to pay another premium for the rest of your life. And it's guaranteed to pay when you pass away. Pass away. That's the contract. You also have premiums. So we, you, you also have premiums. We talked about that. I said that there's a place for term. You also have premiums where what, what we do is we blend term with whole life to bring the premium down. And so what happens is after nice. a 10, 15, 20 year time frame, okay, yeah, the term drops off, but now you paid off the house or you no more need for college education. Exactly. Yeah. But then on top of that, this policy has what's called an increasing death benefit. Uh, so right when the term drops off, guess what the death benefit's been doing? Growing. Yeah. Guess what the premium's been doing? Going down. So you look at it and it's like, okay, I was paying six thousand yeah. dollars a year. Yeah. Now because it's so much cash in here and the policy is earning me so much, yep. now I'm only paying three thousand dollars a year. 
And that's a killer for the people that say, well, when you die, the insurance company keeps all your cash and only pays out your death benefit. You just, you just sabotage that, that misconception. Yeah, well, yeah, because the reality is, is that they don't know yeah. insurance. They know certain insurance companies and how certain insurance companies work, but like, there's so many different products. Like, everything's always evolving. Yeah. Maybe that was how it was back in the day, but yeah. like, things have evolved. Like, yeah. We have these great products out here, and if you have the right people that are writing it the correct way... They operate the same. It's no different when right. if you have the right financial advisor. Right. I guarantee you, being an NFL athlete, yeah. I've met some financial advisors that weren't the greatest, bro. Yeah, but does sure. that mean that all financial advisors don't yeah. want to do well for their for their their, their client? No. Yeah. Right. You know, also, I, also the, the flip side too as well. Sometimes people get an insurance policy from their insurance agent because they have a car policy with them. Yep. They have a homeowner's insurance policy yep. with them. Bundle. But that same car insurance agent, the same homeowner's insurance, the same renter's insurance, the same umbrella insurance agent yep. doesn't necessarily know how to uh, choose the right insurance company or structure it the right way. Correct. And, 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 and package it the right way to make it more cash value retirement planning appropriate. Well, and, and the reality of it is, too, is that, and I, and I, and I tell people this, like, so, so again, like we said, we try to we try to make it to where we can get the premium as low as possible to be able to uh, to front load the cash value. That, that's that's our infinite banking structure model. Mm-hmm. So we actually lose money on the front end because again, as insurance agents, we make our money through what the premium, right? However, we play the long game. Sure. So like I know that if if I have a um, for instance, we have a small business that we captured and we mm-hmm. create these policies to. Um, be an alternative benefit solution to the 401k, yeah. right? They can't afford the 401k. Tax qualified plans are too too high for them to afford for where they are now in business. So then we structure our policies to be a savings mechanism mechanism yeah. with, con- with continuous contractual growth, right? So why is that important? It's important because now we've just created this insurance in- instrument yeah. <laughs> and gave it a yeah. benefit to a company so that they can decrease the employee turnover yeah. because uh, you have a percentage of people that are, I forgot where the, the, the study was done, but there was a study done that said around uh, 63% of Americans that work in, in uh, businesses would take lower pay if their company offered some sort of benefit. And you want to know the number one benefit? Retirement. Retirement, and then right behind that, life insurance. Look at that. I love it. So I love it. Yeah. Beautiful thing. Uh, I think the last one here, mutual funds, you know, uh, they have act- the mutual funds are actively managed. They have big offices, big salaries. They really have a real advantage is common sense. Many of them will not outperform the market on a large scale. <laughs> you know, by the way, I, I, uh, I've, I've, I've been Series 6 licensed. I've been Series 663 licensed. Mm. Um, a lot of them will have their spikes. Tell me what the market is going to do that year. Mm. I'll tell you which mutual fund to pick. Yeah. But then you don't know. Yeah, Be- so, because again, it's called the speculation market. You're looking yeah. at data because you talked about it. You did a great analogy. You talked about the market is based off the rear view. People look at the past performances to try to predict what's going to take place. Yeah. But we can't predict trains exploding in different cities. We can't predict yeah. uh, wars breaking out. We yeah. can't predict Pandemic. pandemics yeah. happening. Yeah. We can't pre- yeah. yeah, we can't predict uh, 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 these large scale companies failing. Right. Yeah. Nobody could could we have predicted Lehman Brothers going out of business? Of course not. Okay, yeah, but it, it had a major Bear effect. Stearns. Yeah, yeah Bear Stearns. Yeah. It had a major effect yeah. on the market. Can we predict that these banks were going to be failing earlier this year? Yes, yeah. I'm gonna tell you why. Because because history shows <laughs> that banks have a, banks run the same play: elevate lots of loans and cure lots of debt. Oh my God, we can't pay it. Go to the Federal Reserve and the government. The government says, "Hey, we're going to help you out." Oh, and by the way. Uh, this is an, an, an inflation market. It's a it's, it's world global a pandemic when it comes to the financials of the market. Yeah. Hmm, taxpayers, we need to and, bail and us the thing out. Is insurance companies, too, are probably some of the most highly audited and regulated institutions in America. Well, this is the old money club, man. Well, yeah, well, let's look at it, man. Like, look, what, what have they been through? Like, yeah. you have these companies that's been around since the 1800s, yeah. right? Like eight, like 1865 and 1870 when they were established, and they've been paying dividends since those they, whole times. Con- like continuous the Civil terms. War, Civil War. Uh, you had you had the Knickerbocker crisis in 1907, right? right? You you uh, even in the establishment of the Federal Reserve in 1913, then you come back with the Depression. Like you look at all of these different things, and I think you might have even talked about it. Ray Kroc, how did he get started? Of course. Right? Life insurance. All right. No bank would lend for a theme park. Yeah. Okay. You remember you, you remember James Cash? Yeah, James Cash. J.C. Uh, Penny? Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. used that same, to kids. Same to, to, so it's like, okay, so yeah. it's good enough for the wealthy families and for all of these established corporations, yeah. but it's, it's, it's poo-pooed on yeah. when you talk about these type of things. It's and so our audience is listening. It's live or watching the replay. Yeah. 
you hear stuff from us. By the way, I'll say both sides. Mm-hmm. You hear stuff from us, and you hear the opposite from other social media posts. My suggestion is you got to educate yourself. Yeah, do your homework. You know, because um, uh, some things that we talk about because we have a certain expertise, some other somebody else might have a different expertise. We all have different experiences. You got to figure out what fits for you. Absolutely. And so, um, uh, Jordan, we got a couple of videos here. We love for uh, Tony's reaction on. We do. Uh, we, we, there's some videos here that uh, we found that's tr- somewhat trending on, uh, on on social media. All right, let's do and, it. And uh, we love man. to get your insight on, on, on some <laughs> of this stuff. So uh, uh, let's go to the first one. Um, you truly don't know a person until they get what they want. Mm. Let's take a look at this. X said, "You don't truly know a person." until they don't get what they want. Mm-hmm. That's when they That's show true. you who they are. And I see that all the time. If a friend asks you to borrow money, you're like, nah, fam, I'm sorry, I can't. They, turn they might around. turn around and be a little punky to you, or maybe like yeah. a guy who wants mm-hmm. to, or, or a girl who tries to get into bed with you and you say no, then they turn into a different way. You're like, oh my God, this Thank is who God you I did. You know, it's, uh, you know it's, it's, it's crazy that she meant that. Um, you know, Patrick was talking about um, toxic giving. Mm. You know, you give once, you elicit us appreciation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you give twice, you create anticipation. Mm-hmm. So if people appreciate it the first time, you give it again, like they're going to anticipate you giving it again. Absolutely. Third time, you create expectation. Fourth time, you create entitlement. Fifth time, you give to them, they create dependency. Then when we stop doing it, Right, they expect you to give. Now you create an enemy. I'm pretty sure you, with an entourage being in the NFL, you created some of those. Oh. I had some of these with, oh. with, with, with the crew. Listen, man, you 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 cannot know who a friend is until time of adversity. There's a there's a Bible scripture that tells you that that you can't know a friend in prosperity. Mm. Right? Mm. If you guys if you guys have ever heard of uh, of of the apocrypha, you go to Ecclesiasticus <laughs> chapter twelve <laughs> verse eight, and it tells you that a friend will not be known in prosperity. A friend may only be known in adversity. And that's from King Solomon. Yeah, the richest and wisest king. You understand? Yeah. So he's he's ch- he's giving us the game, and so like. And I've experienced that. Yeah. You know, when you're riding high, everybody's your friend, gotcha. right? When you retire and you're trying to figure out life yeah. out and the party stop and, yeah. the, the, you know, the, the, the big glamorous lifestyle stops because you're trying to be smart with your money and you're like, nah, bro, I can't go to the club or nah, bro, I'm, I'm good on that. Yeah. Oh, he broke. He ain't got mm-hmm. no money. And now it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me stay. Let me, let me play this, this broke game. I ain't got it. And let's just yeah. see who weeds themselves out, yeah. right? And so now what happens is, is that, and I've seen this before multiple times, is that now when you come back, yep. now that's the, I always knew Matt was going to make it. Sure. You know what uh, I mean? Come on, And bro. you just smile and be like, man, I appreciate the support. <laughs> right? What's up, brother? How you doing? <laughs> yeah. uh, my good friend, Lanell Harris, back in Chicago. Yeah, right? yeah. He's the, he's the former chief diversity officer for a major cell phone, uh, cellular, co- cellular company. Nice. He's in business for himself now, just coaching. His wife does a, 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 a Spears Bureau uh, a bookings. Anyway, he calls me up, uh, 2020. Mm. Uh, right before the pandemic, but because we're having in Chicago the All Star Game, yeah, the NBA yeah. All Star Game. That's, that's when Kobe died. And oh, yeah. A lot of emotion was high in the NBA, mm-hmm. and so he calls me up. He said, "Bro, I got some tickets to where the All Star Game, bro." So you're my first phone call. First question I asked him: How much? Yep. How much? Yep. Uh, I'm glad you asked that. It's a this much. I was like, like, like five, six grand. Yeah. No problem. I take my view Venmo. Blah blah yeah, blah. Yeah. Uh, blah. So I sent it over to him, and I, I, I said, um, "I'm just curious." Because I've been in your position before. Mm-hmm. Who did you call? How many people are on your list, bro? You're at the top of the list, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm not a, I'm not a mooch. Yeah, I'm not a, f- a freeloader. You know, absolutely. And so the fact that I paid for it, he paid for it. We value each other's friendship Correct. that much more. We're not leaning on each other. We're leading with each other, but not, not leading on each other. So uh, that was, that was my experience with this type of mm-hmm. you know, conversation. Yeah. Let's look at the second video about Trump hand, handling pressure. Trump handling pressure. You have to have an ability to handle pressure. And people that can handle pressure can be entrepreneurs, can be successful. Now, I have some friends that are really, really smart, but they can't handle pressure. Hmm. In which case, they should work for somebody, do great, and have a good life. There's nothing wrong with it. Because I almost think that's an instinctive thing, the ability to handle pressure. Now, one of the things I tell people about pressure is you know what they said? How do you handle pressure? Who's had more pressure than me? Hey, yeah, yeah. Have I had pressure over the years? But one of the things I tell people about handling pressure is remember, because they asked me the question, how do you handle the stress? You've got to be able to sort of say to yourself, nothing matters that much other than the real big deals. 
with family, with your faith, etc. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, first of all, controversial person. Yeah. Um, but the values and principles that he brought up in that was was on point. I think uh, one person was interviewing him and said, "What's what's was, was Trump's biggest ability? It's that mm-hmm. handling pressure. He can compartmentalize mm-hmm. this." What's your thoughts on you? Because you're handling pressure. You're you're you're, you're blocking pressure. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. Keeping yeah, yeah. So oh, well, to stay well, clean. Well, yeah. You, you look at you it, it for in, a living. You look at it in football, but you look at it in life, right? Like yeah. married, five kids. You know, you you, you got to now reinvent yourself. You got to like for 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 me, I had to become the financial guy, right? So so there's a lot of work that that comes into that. While hey, you still got to pay these bills. So if you're going this entrepreneur way, you know you, you're dipping in the savings, you're making stuff mm-hmm. happen, you, yeah. you, you you're building right. That's every entrepreneur story. You cannot get out of that. Um, I think it's it's a it's a lot in alignment with Trump. And and I say this too, re- regardless of how you feel about it. My, my mom told me it's not about the messenger; it's about the message. And so if the message holds true, then then glean from that, learn mm-hmm. from that. Um, so for me, it's the same thing. How do I compartmentalize? And I think us as men are really good at that. High mm-hmm. value, high value, high uh, 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 working men that move in these spaces, corporate execs, business owners, athletes, they have a real good mentality on how to compartmentalize issues, tragedies. Yeah. You have the athlete who's, uh, who's, you know, mother passes away or who loses their son and then they're still out there playing. Marquise Goodwin is one of them. Lost his, lost his baby and went out and scored a touchdown. How do you do that? How do you do that? It's not that he doesn't love his child, but he like how do you how do you still focus in things yeah. like that? You have to be able to understand, hey, what is real, yeah, and, and, and what is not important at this particular moment. I remember that moment, and he he broke down, and uh, he broke uh, down. He broke down when he scored, and, yeah. and all his players realized yeah. what he's going through. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Geez. So it's like it's like like, and he talked about adversity. I, I man, I promise you, that we can go on that all day yeah. long. Okay, you remember Rocky. Of course. When he was talking to his son, and I think mm-hmm. that's so important, man. He it's was not talking about to his son. When life hits you. Yeah. He said, he said, he said, he said, uh, life is not about life is not about how hard you can hit. It's about hard how hard you can get hit and keep moving yeah. forward. How hard you can take a punch and keep moving. Yeah. Right? And I think that, and I and I will speak to the men on this. Those men that take on that mentality yeah. fare fare really well in life. It's not to say that we don't break down. Yeah. It's, and then we talked about mm-hmm. this with, uh, at the Cowboys Club. For sure. It's, 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 it's to say that we understand that we have a responsibility. Our responsibility is our family. <laughs> I cannot go look at my, my four boys and my daughter and say, you know what, Daddy, I, 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 need, a, I need to check out today. Yeah. It doesn't work no, like that. No. So I have to figure out how to take this thing that is, a, that is bothering me that's really disturbing my spirit and my soul and put it to the side so that I can continue moving my family forward. There you go. That's what life is about. And I feel like for me, because I had adversity early, yep. it allowed me to play in that space for so long to now when you get to almost 40 years old, yeah. it's like, okay, here's another opportunity. That's it, right? bro. You start to look for it now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now it's like, it's, and I'll say this. The Bible says this. It says that gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace. He said, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, but constantly endure. That means always. Constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. I hold on to that scripture Mm -hmm. because for me, I'm like, okay, if God said this, that's how I'm going to operate. Regardless of how I feel, regardless if I'm not there or not, we're going to operate like that. Boom. So in other words, it's taking ownership. Let's take a look at the other video here about Ben Shapiro. He's talking about capitalism, which is a oh, bastardized man. word today. <laughs> I like Ben. Say so you own a pencil factory. I'm oh, a worker yeah, in that pencil yeah. factory. But without me and presumably many others like me to assemble the pencils, all you would have is a pile of wood, yellow paint, graphite, rubber, and aluminum. The owner of the factory carries the risk, therefore he gets the benefit. The workers in the company you mentioned, if that company were to go bankrupt, they would carry the risk as well as the benefit. If the company goes bankrupt, and this guy has to pay off all of his debts, the worker may lose his job, but he's not the one who's going to incur the debt of having gone bankrupt. Okay, it is the investor who pays the downside, who invested in all the machinery, who sunk millions of dollars into making your labor productive. Because guess what? Your labor is without that machinery. Gunk. Nothing. You don't have a pencil to put together. You don't got the wood. You don't got the, you don't got the paint. You don't got the rubber. You don't got the metal. You got nothing. Right? You're sitting there, standing outside, twiddling your thumbs. 
who do you think put more in? The guy who spent millions of dollars buying all the machinery, leasing the place, making sure there was a management structure, doing the LLC formation, making sure all the tax code was in compliance, or you standing outside because you can stick a piece of graphite into a piece of wood? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Because there's, there, there's, a, there's a generation of people thinking now that, hey, hey, you, you owe me. Entitlement. You owe me entitlement. Yeah, man. Owe me. I've done this, you owe me. Yeah. So uh, let me, we were talking about this at the Cowboys Club. Yeah. Speaking of entitlement, we talked about reparations for the black community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your answer to that? Uh, I think that you should pay us. I think that you should pay us. When you look historically of every uh, nationality that has been wrong, they have been paid. Right. And I said, I said this. My question is, why have we not been paid? OK. Right. And so but I also said there's two there's it's two a flip, parts. There's, a, there's a flip side to that. I said that if you paid us more than likely just based off of where we are as it pertains to the, the, the trajectory of our net worth being zero by 2050, uh, what we what we as a community look towards as it pertains to sports and, and not really as much as education and things like finance that matters. Right. Uh, more than likely, we would give it right back anyway. And that might be a hard truth for people, but that's the reality. And, and where do I get that data from? You remember those stimulus checks? Of course. The last here's, three years. Here's my personal experience. I went to, I was in Houston uh, uh, doing an, uh, a business deal, and I drove by the Galleria. This is when Houston had just opened, and the, and the malls and stores had just opened. And I saw people that looked like me wrapped around the whole store, getting in ready to spend that money. Gucci bags. On Gucci bags, yeah. on Louis, on all of these particular things. I visually saw that. And it was sad. But at the same time, I do know that there are people out there like myself and like my comrades that would take that money and be able to flip it and do some, well, some, some really good things. And I think that maybe that might be the reason why they're holding off on us. It's not those that'll give it back, it's those that'll do something good with it. Because mm -hmm. I look at it and say this, the government period doesn't want any of us to have our own, yeah. right? Right now, mm -hmm. um, um, the, the FDA is looking to put in a bill that, that, sh that sh says that if you're growing food in your home, you have to report, report that. Yep. Why would I need to report? It's my house. It's my, my house, land, my, my land, business. my uh, and inside my house. We don't say we, let's take the it's land not, it's part. Land. Yeah, let's say it's my land yeah. in my house. Yeah. Why would I need to report that? Yeah. It's about control. Yeah. Everything's about control. So well, that's why July first, America want this uh, cryptocurrency, the, the 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 Fed now yeah. type of uh, a policy. So yeah. listen, capitalism has absolutely changed my life. Yeah, I've, I've uh, somebody asked me what's the best resource to 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 raise capital to to. Um, to get a business loan. You know, mm. brother, I've never gotten a business loan. Me no, no, Right? No SBA, nothing. Mm -mm. I've made a lot of money in commissions. Yep. I've managed my finances. Yep. I've kept my expenses low. I've kept my cash high. And when I need to make a move on something, I had the cash. Yeah. I became my own bank. Yeah. I stuffed it with inside life insurance policy we talked about earlier. Correct. I bought my cars. Yep. Funded my office spaces. Funded my office furniture with money I saved and tucked away my life insurance policies. But, but Matt, you want to know what, and, and, and that's why, you know, and I talk to you about things and I ask you questions and, and, and look up to you as somebody that's been in this industry for a while. One of the things that you don't talk about that I really want you to start talking about okay. is the fact that it took you time to get here, bro. <laughs> you, you, you feel me? Like, it took you yeah. time to get 24 here. 24 years of doing this, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, and they look at you now, man. You know, you got the smooth gray. You fit. You know, you're pissing them 100-pound dumbbells. So they're like, they think you're young. They think you just showed up. But, like, you, you put the time in, and I think that we have as a people, and I'm saying all of us as a people, not just black yeah. people, white people, none of that. I'm saying uh, as a people, we have to find a way to get off of Instagram, right, mm -hmm. that, that, that serves instant gratification is what I call it, right, in yeah. magnitude. That's yeah. what Instagram stands for, right? And we have to start getting back to that, that oven cooking. Yeah. Let's put the microwave yeah. away and let's bake that oven for a little bit. Yeah. Let's take time to understand, okay, how, what is my vision, yeah. right? Without the vision? People perish. Okay, so it says that. Yeah. So what is my vision? And I talked about this in another podcast. First, understand what is your belief system because your belief determines your actions, right? So if you believe that you're a wealthy person and you have to start moving like wealthy people do, even if you don't have it, yeah. it's about putting in, that's that practice, the reason why when I showed up on game day, I felt confident in my ability is because I know the work that I put in in training camp and in practice. Yeah. So it's the same thing. So it takes time to build out to these things. Yeah, and it's about sure. strategy. What is your strategy? Yeah. Like you got uh, Wall Street Trapper. He loves the stock market. 
right? That's where he makes his money. That's great. That's a strategy. We're more in the insurance space. Mm -hmm. We love that. That's yeah. a strategy. Figure out what your strategy is and then operate in that space long enough to become successful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, this, uh, the, the adage of me buying four different exotic cars with my life insurance policy, probably one of my most, most viewed uh, deals. There's some values and principles I've stood by for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was single for when I, when I had baby mama drama and I've got three kids with two different women. Yeah. I knew right then and there I was in a bad pattern. Yeah. And I wasn't going to repeat it again. Mm. But it took my entire 30s, man, yeah. to repay the mistakes in my 20s. Yeah. And then for 12 years, bro, I was just single. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm going to find the right one until I found my now wife. Yeah. And I'm not going to let her go. I'm going to yeah. fix myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to improve myself. I'm going to uh, out strategize to make sure I keep her, keep her happy. Mm -hmm. I, I, love my, I love my wife. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I want to make sure that I do what I need to do as a man. But there's so many videos out there. Social media is so bad. Yeah. As seeing the young, uh, young 20, 30 year olds. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I was reacting to a video one time. I said, listen, last year I was a, I was a, a waiter. And I was a, a caddy at a golf course. Yeah. The next year, I bought my first apartment building for two million bucks. Yep. It put twenty percent down. I'm like, wait a minute. He, he put four hundred thousand dollars down. How do you? Where, where, where did he get it? Exactly. <laughs> where do you get the four hundred thousand dollars from? You don't just don't. Even if you had investors. Yeah. You don't just create automatic investor relations like that just because you were a server one year. You got to have. If I'm an investor, some kid asked me for a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, okay. What's, what's your, what, what, let me see the pro forma. What's yep. your history? Yep. How many deals have you done, bro? Are you kid? I'm not. I'm, you're not experimenting with my money. Correct. So, but a lot of people see that on social media today and they think that it's normal. Yeah, you know? and, and that's the thing is that we like we've gotten so we've gotten into this instant gratification lane so much and Instagram lane so much that like now, Matt, we don't even have common sense, <laughs> right? We don't even have common sense. Like Not what person? What person do you know? What business plan is somebody with money? Because I'm I'm around wealthy people, and I'm gonna tell you now, wealthy people. Don't really spend money like that. Yeah, exactly. Right? That that like when they spend money, rest assured that that thing that they're spending on, you need to look into because it's getting ready to be a huge return. There's yeah, a lot of research sure. and diligence that goes yeah. into that, yeah. right? So for this kid to to say that I'm a waiter and now you know I put four hundred thousand dollars down on a two million dollar property, right? Yeah. Um, I gotta call BS on that, bro. Exactly. And the reason why is because. First and foremost, it takes you more than a year just to understand the market. For sure. For sure. Like, I'm around investors. Let alone raise capital. Yes. You know? So, so you don't understand the market. You don't have a, you don't have a, a, a blueprint to your business. You probably, your business is probably not even LLC. You're yeah. probably operating in your, like, you're a yeah. kid. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, here, I'm almost 40, and there's still things that I'm still yeah. learning. So you're telling me that this 22, 23-year-old kid who wasn't raised in this space, yeah. let's, let's put the caveat in there. Yeah is now able to make these type of moves. Guys, we got to use common sense, man. Sure. You know, yep. like the application of knowledge is power. <laughs> I, I was interviewing Ed Slot. You know Ed Slot, you know, America's IRA expert, right? Yeah, So yeah. we had him at a conference uh, uh, earlier this year. He says, uh, so, so what has been your, you know, everybody knows you, man. Wall Street Journal calls you America's IRA expert and blah, blah, blah. You're a CPA. You're a CPI. Trust. He's been around for a minute. Mm -hmm. He goes, Matt, I tell you what. Somebody told me this a long time ago. I'll tell you this. If you do the same profitable things over and over and over, every day, every week, for every month, for every year, next 20 years, you'll be an overnight success. Yeah. Absolutely. I, 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 I agree. Next 20 years, you'll be an overnight success. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, you know, yeah. I'm in, I'm, you're in your space. I'm yeah. in my space. I'm not yeah. leaving. I, I've done this before. Yeah. Right. I did it professionally yeah. th through sports. Yep. And now I get to do it through business. But this time, it's mine. For sure. <laughs> and for those who come to our workshop tonight in our office in Carrollton, Texas, you'll see my Rolls Royce. You'll see Brian Hicks' Rolls Royce. You'll see a bunch of Porsches. Be some... But guys, we're in our 40s, man. We're in, a, we're in, a, we're in our, some guys are in their early 50s. We spent our enti pretty much our entire adult life mm -hmm. grinding and finding out what works, what doesn't work, so therefore we can buy these things and it feels like a cheeseburger when you do buy it. Because when, when you buy a Rolls Royce, you shouldn't be spending more money in your Rolls Royce than you do in your investments. Yeah. That's just a toy. It should feel like a cheeseburger when you buy a Rolls Royce. But we're not after status. We're after purpose. And uh, I just want to let you guys know when you see my car, you sit in it, and I drop the top, and you're able to enjoy a little bit of music and listening to it. It took me 20 years to get to that point to be able to buy that thing and to, to buy it the right way through my LLC and, and, and not borrow money. Uh, uh, Last before I wrap up, yeah, I actually got when I became a millionaire, a cash millionaire and a cash flow millionaire. Not, not just a net worth millionaire, but actually cash millionaire in the next bank door. And cash flow. <laughs> um, I went to go say, I'm going to get my Lambo. The, yeah. uh, I went to go get a Lambo. Bro, I got turned down. I got turned down in credit. You know what they said? You don't have any credit. Mm. <laughs> said, I got a bunch of credit cards, but I don't have a mortgage. I don't yep. have a car loan debt. Yep, yep. I got turned down for a car loan because I just wasn't using credit. I, my bank was my... 
Strategy. That's it. Strategy. So, We're going to listen. My strategy is to leverage OPM in any, in any means necessary. Yeah. You know, uh, the same guy we listened to about uh, debt, he said something that was very powerful. He said that he is the king. Uh, uh, he talked about adversity, Donald Trump. He said he's the king of debt. When you realize that the banking systems and the government, that's how they make money, then you can start to understand how do we leverage good debt yeah. to create passive income streams. Love it, brother. Yeah, any, any final thoughts, man, before we wrap up, man? It's just been, uh, but we, should, we need like a two-hour podcast. Yeah, yeah, here, yeah. No, no, yeah. man, I appreciate it. This was great. First of all, man, thank you for having me on. For sure, brother. This was phenomenal. Anytime I get to top it up with you and learn some things, that's great always things, good. Um, if, if I had to leave people with anything, um, time is the most valuable thing and the most valuable commodity that we have, but I truly believe it's the least thought of, right? And I think that we have to start evaluating where we spend our time and who we spend our time with, man. And uh, knowing that you, wife and kids, I have wife and kids, and we took the time to do this, man, I want to say I appreciate you for spending time with me today. Uh, and I hope my time was worth it and oh, yeah. you was able to, 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 to drop some gems to the people. But that's what I would say. Uh, really start to value your time, people, because you never know when that clock runs out. That's it, man. Because yeah. no matter how much money you make, you can never buy time. You can regain time because, uh, you know, if you lost a lot of money, thank God for capitalism, for enterprise, you can make that money back, but yeah. you'll never be able to buy time. So that being said, make the most of the time that God has given you. And if uh, you agree with this conversation, please let us know your thoughts. Please drop in the comment section below. If you are on Instagram, make sure you follow Tony Hills. We'll put his Instagram links here at the bottom two as well in the description of this YouTube video. But with that being said, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Millionaire Goals Podcast. Tomorrow we'll be with my... Home team co-host, Milton Alvarez, Wednesday, 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. And on Thursday, we also have Keenan Williams coming in, too, as well. You know Keenan, right? Yeah, Keenan yeah. Keenan will come here on Thursday. We're going to be talking about uh, what happened to our attorney general here in Texas. We're going to talk about uh, the DeSantis-Trump uh, mm. campaign, what's going on there with the Democrat uh, Democratic uh, uh, moves and strategy that they're doing right now. So a lot of interesting conversations. Absolutely. Why does it matter, by the way? Because it affects our pocket. It's going to affect your pocket too as well if you don't stay on top of this. Plato said, if you don't understand politics, eventually you will be ruled by your inferiors. Mm -hmm. That being said, that being uh, from, from Dallas, Texas, on behalf of Tony Hills with an S, <laughs> I'm a mighty smart guy until we meet again. Continue a little smart, continue a lot of smart, and be mighty smart today. See you tomorrow.